Let's get into some matchups for the game this Sunday, man. I'm fired up. I can't wait. And, and, and I talked about this yesterday. It's the third best team they faced on paper. Uh, and it is a good test. It's on the road. You're in Tampa. Pretty pretty good defense, especially. That's really the main concern for me, at least. I mean, they got weapons, too. And Baker, of course, is having a career year. But that defense... I think I believe they have eight players that have rings on that defense still yeah. from when Tom Brady was there. So oh, yeah. like an experienced defense, a defense that's, that have seen a lot. Levante David has been a, a high level linebacker in this oh, league yeah. for a while. Oh yeah, you got Devin White, who's just a menace, sideline to sideline tackling machine, uh, and he likes to get after the quarterback too. So mm -hmm. sprinkle that in there. So matchups, though, I want to go through, and I wrote some matchups down that I thought were really interesting, and I'll get your guys' um, opinion on this, and Sam, we'll, we'll go to you on yeah, some things you, sure, you're looking sure. at. For me, the biggest matchup, because it's what the Lions want to do, and it's, want the, it's what the Bucks want to do, which is the Lions rushing offense against Tampa Bay's rushing defense. That's a great one. Um, Lions rank seventh in the NFL right now currently, um, at least for rushing offenses. They're seventh. Now, you look at Tampa Bay's run defense, they rank 10. So you talk about a, a top 10 matchup on, on uh, offense and defense. The Lions get a good test. Now, you face some, some decent defenses, but nothing I don't think of, of this caliber, in my opinion. Because um, even when you face the Chiefs, to your point, Sam, they didn't have Chris Jones. So I think that was a significant disadvantage. But regardless... The Bucks had a majority healthy defense. Now the secondary is a little questionable, but that front seven is mm -hmm. is real business. They're all they're all business over there, and I think that's going to be an interesting matchup. Especially you get Jameer back. Expecting we'll see how he trends. I'm not 100 percent certain with him. We have to go through the injury report, but if you do, that'll help a lot. But Demont, you're, you're going to have to lean on him a lot this game. Bam Knight's out for the season. Craig Reynolds might get some touches if if Jameer can't go, but I think that's the most important matchup. Another one that I like is the Lions' points per game. Offensively, they're fourth in the NFL right now. They average 29.6 po uh, points per game. You know how many uh, points the Bucks allow? They allow 17. Yeah, they're pretty good. So, another good matchup. You got a high-flying offense almost averaging 30 for the Lions, and you got a defense for the Bucks who are only giving up 17 a game. That's going to be a matchup, and you're on the road. The next matchup I like is off. It's it, offense versus offense, uh, Bucks and, and Lions. Red zone efficiency. Not really a matchup, but something to keep an eye on. I thought this was really interesting. The Lions right now in the NFL are 13th in red zone efficiency. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are 20th. So, and they've been winning at least at least the last two games. They faced the Vikings and I believe the Bears, and they've only won by like a score. If that. Uh, so, again, this isn't a team that can score 30-plus. They're not a high-flying offense. They'll make you play their type of game, which is a, a nasty, gritty, 2017 type of game. That's how they want to play. So those are the matchups I have. You keep an eye on. What about you, Sam Flannel? Anything you got in mind? You know, those are some really good ones, and you actually stole a couple, but I'm glad you hit on them because I think they're very, very important. But I have a couple of things, and I wouldn't even necessarily say matchups, ways in which the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can give the Lions trouble because this is a good football team with a lot of good players. And I want to start out with their good players because this is a team coming into the year. A lot of people said with Baker Mayfield at quarterback is going to be tanking, is going to be three wins, is going to be four wins. This is going to be an easy win for the Lions, but they have shown this year that that may not be the case, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers may also be a playoff team, may also be a division winner. And one of the reasons why is because they just have a lot of talent. They have guys who are going to be Hall of Famers, guys who have been Pro Bowlers, guys who have been All Pros, guys who have won Super Bowls, like Mike Evans. Mike Evans may or may not play, but he started his career with nine straight 1,000-yard seasons, and in his 10th year is having as good a season as he's ever had, at least what he's on pace for. He's always been under. To me, insane. he's always been underrated. Absolutely. Mike Evans. Mike Evans will be wearing a gold jacket in Canton when he retires. I, I think we would that. all agree. And yeah. then Chris Godwin, he's another guy. Their wide receiver, too, has 3,000-yard seasons in his career and is also having a pretty productive year as well. And that'll be a tough matchup, I think, for the for the Lions secondary, which I don't know if it's ever going to hurt them, but I think it might not having C.J. Gardner-Johnson or Emmanuel Mosley at some point. This is the type of wide receiver core in which they might be able to exploit some matchups. Do I trust Cam Sutton and Jerry 
Jacobs? To an extent, yes, because Cam Sutton has played very, very well. And so has Jerry Jacobs. And Jerry Jacobs just happens to be tied for the NFL lead in interceptions. But those are two tough wide receivers. And of course, they have Tristan Wirfs, who to me is, if Penny Sewell's a gold jacket guy for the Lions, as a lot of people think that he is, I think Tristan Wirfs is a gold jacket guy for Tampa Bay. I think they're about equals when it comes to offensive line. Just dominant players, one of the best tackles in the NFL. But one way in which the Lions could kind of counteract that is they have Aiden Hutchinson, mm -hmm. who is one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. I don't know if they'll always be lined up mano y mano, no. but when they are, I think it's it's Aiden Hutchinson can exploit that. I just think against anybody else on the front seven, I think Tristan Wirfs could, has the advantage against anybody else but Aiden. And of course, you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. They have Antoine Winfield Jr. in the backfield, who is having Dog. a damn good year. He's been a pro bowler. That, He's that, won a Super Bowl. Antoine Winfield Jr. is one of the most underrated players in football. Yeah. Flat out. Yeah, he is. And you could argue this year, I, I would say either him or Vita Vea has been their best defensive player. Antoine Winfield Jr. has been balling out. You got Levante David, Devin White. Again, pro bowlers, all pro, all pro players. I don't think they're having the best seasons of their career, and I think Levante David is bordering on over the hill. You could argue that he's on the downside of his career, but these are still players that can that can cause problems in many, many ways. And of course, I already mentioned Vita Vey, one of the better and more underrated interior defensive linemen in the NFL, who I think might be on pace to have his best season ever. He's been a pro bowler. He was a part of those Super Bowl teams. And then you talk about Shaq Barrett, a guy who in his past, I don't know if he's as good as, as a, the player that he once was, has been a high double digit sack guy, has been an all pro, pro player, has been a pro bowler, and was also a valuable member of that Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl team. So I guess, and then when you when you counteract that, the Lions, of course, have a lot of good offensive players. I think that the offensive line could maybe neutralize or at least keep in check some of the linebackers like Devin White, Levante David, Vita Vey, the like. And then if Amon Ross St. Brown plays, I think Antoine Winfield, although he'll have an impact on the game, he doesn't necessarily have the best corners around him. I know Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean are names, but especially in the case of Jamel Dean, he's not playing his best football. And Carlton Davis has been injured for part of the year. So, I guess my point in all of this is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a lot of damn good players, but so do the Detroit Lions. It's just you can't overlook that this is a very, very talented roster, especially when it comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense and wide receivers. Yeah, and the, the one, I guess, if you look at weaknesses on this football team, Lucas, I, even though Baker's having a career year, it is Baker. It like, in terms of question marks, like the, the defense is pretty proven. A lot of proven players, proven talent, proven wide receivers. Offensive line isn't as good as when Brady was there. But Baker's like the one, ugh, like, I, I don't know what I'm getting from him. Yeah, I mean, Baker's definitely suspect. There's that annual Baker Mayfield cycle where he looks really good. He has to prove himself. Like he clockwork. Do he doubles down. I'm that guy. You all counted me out. He'll win one more game, which was last week. And then the cycle, it completes itself. Now Baker Mayfield returns to earth. He creates more controversy. All of his teammates hate him. He requests a trade, and he's on to another team the next year. So that's going to happen. I think that's just annually Baker Mayfield. If, and I'm not trying to be funny when I say this. If the two guys that I'm worried about, Antoine Woodfield, if there's no Sam Laporta, mm -hmm. because he's just like his flannel set. He's a dominant guy. And I, you guys have heard me talk about him before. Rookie wide receiver Trey Palmer out of Nebraska. Especially if there's no Mike Evans, I'm telling you Trey Palmer is a stud. There's not a lot of film on him, and he's going to get more reps, and he's a big wide receiver. So when you talk about just a possible mismatch, I think that's what those one of those guys where I don't think this is going to be a sleep game, like a trap game. Like I don't think the Lions are going to be going in there sleeping. Yeah. Knock on wood. But I'm saying if somehow they do, if there was a guy to kind of be like, how the hell is this happening? Trey Palmer is going to open up the game. So we got to rely on Cam Sutton either locking down Chris Godwin. I don't think Mike Evans is going to play, but there's a chance. If he plays, he's not going to be 100%. But the fact is the, he's bringing out the, the creamsicle uniforms. The Buccaneers are debuting him. He's never played in them, and he said he was excited to play in orange. So he might be out there. But if they don't, I'm telling you, watch out for Trey Palmer. Antoine Winfield's there, but the... The Baker Mayfield thing, yeah, I, I, I'm not worried about Baker at all. If you put pressure on Baker, which the Lions are going to with how weak this offensive line for the Buccaneers is compared to the past, Baker's going to shrink and make bad decisions. I, I just have this feeling that this game, uh, considering also you look at the defenses for the Lions and the Buccaneers, both teams rank in the top 11. Lions are ranked 11th, tied with, with another team, and the Tampa Bay Bucks are 5th in takeaways. So they're two defenses that 
take the football away. I have a feeling this game's going to be just a slugfest. Like, I don't think this will be a 30-27 to 27 win for the Lions. I think this will be a very low-scoring game. That's just the vibe I'm getting. Well, and speaking of turnovers, I'll touch on this briefly. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, another thing that you should worry about if you're a Lions fan, if you're a Lions player, is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, believe it or not, are tied for first in the NFL in turnover differential at plus seven, which is absurd, especially through four games. And the team that they are tied with is the San Francisco 49ers, which if you're tied with the San Francisco 49ers for anything, you are doing something right. And that is, to me, primarily why the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been winning games. The good news is, for the most part, Part, the Lions have played good, clean football throughout the year. But the one game where turnovers really hurt them was the one game they lost. The game that they lost to Seattle, of course, Jared Goff threw a costly pick six, and David Montgomery had a fumble in his in the Lions' own territory, which wasn't all his fault, but it did result in it getting recovered by the Seahawks and then having a 23-yard touchdown drive. Those are the type of mistakes that the Lions could make that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been forcing other teams into that could cost them this game. I'm not saying that I don't expect the Lions to play good team football, good team clean football, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have been pretty opportunistic this year, and that is something that you can't take for granted. I, I think this game gets ugly. I really okay. do. I really, I don't, like, I like a blowout. I think it's going to be like Green Bay. I think it's going to be very similar wow. to Green Bay. I really do. I don't think Tampa Bay is going to establish any running game. I, it all comes down to Baker that's Mayfield. Fair. I'm sorry. Like, and if that's what you're relying on, it's going to get up. No, like it, I, I, I get that. I guess my thought process is just like, flip, on the flip side, golf against that defense. But and I'm not, not that golf is no, he's not a slouch or anything, but that defense, they're, they're legit. No, you're, and that's not wrong, especially with Todd Bowles. But like, I watch golf look, I, I, I have no fear about that after he went into Arrowhead against Steve Spagnuolo on that defense. I understand no Chris Jones, but that's still a still great pretty defense. good defense. That's and I. I'm just not worried about it, especially like when he he has less pressure on him, especially too. Like he's gonna have time to cook. You got Amon Ross St. Brown back. You're gonna get Jameer Gibbs back. I I just don't really see this game being close. Maybe at first, like maybe in the first half, it's a little close. But I think if that if that's the case, the second half it'll start to pull away. Now the other part of it too, I, I, for me, if it is a, a pretty decisive win, I think it'll be like the Falcons, like a 26 win. I don't, I don't see it. You think the Lions can put up 30 on the road in Tampa against that defense? Yeah, especially with okay. JMO back, like if they get him. I'm not saying, like, if there's, there's many possibilities where I could see the Lions putting up 30. Uh, this one says, Kiazi says, Jeff, stop worrying. I'm not worrying. I'm just being trying to be realistic here. You know, I, I don't want to sound like a slappy and every week say the Lions are going to blow this team out. You know what I mean? I'm trying to look at it objectively, which this defense for Tampa, now context and who they played, but still, they're, they're a damn good defense. Now there's holes and things you can expose, but... Linebacker, the front seven is legit. Like mm -hmm. Vita sure. Vea is a behemoth of a human being, and you're going to run on him. So you're going to have to find a way to do that. So I don't want to just act like, yeah, the Buccaneers, the three and one division leading Buccaneers, are going to blow them out. I, I don't think that that's going to happen, especially on the road at four o'clock. I think it's. Some injuries, like Sam Laporta, could be out. Like there is some concern there. Yeah, I mean, for me at least, both. Thing I think they still win, but you know, not a, not a blowout. And I'm glad you said that. Both things can be true. I mean, we can all expect the Lions to win this game. More on our predictions a little bit later on in the show. But if you think that the Lions are just going to go in there and dog walk the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm not saying that's what you're saying, Lucas. It's just that with no trouble whatsoever, I think you might have another thing coming because the Buccaneers this year they have stopped the run, although they they haven't faced a rush offense. The Cal of the Detroit Lions, which is very, very like, fair. Look at, and not to cut you off, I want to keep like so you can keep going. But like my thing is, the game that makes me feel completely confident about this is how bad they looked against Philadelphia at home, and the, they had no answer whatsoever for DeAndre Swift in that Eagles offensive line. No, that is an excellent point because the one rushing offense that they played, which was the caliber of the Lions or better, DeAndre Swift ran all over them, mm -hmm. and the Buccaneers got blown out, and that is 100% yep. fair. But they have, for the most part stop the run they have been very very good at not allowing points which is the ultimate goal of a defense and they've turned the football over they have turned other teams over and they have not turned the football over maybe the lions exploit everything that the tampa bay buccaneers do well and i wouldn't be shocked if they do it's just if you're thinking that the buccaneers could be a tough game you're not a hater no i'm kind of defending you jeff you're not a hater no no and, and for this comment shot says what's wrong with being confident in your team the lions fans being realistic is just another word for saying i'm scared i'm prepared to lose that shit is lame as hell no i don't i wouldn't go that far like i'm, I'm just i'm prepared to lose and I, I'm, I'm 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 being you know i'm skeptical about the lines it's not, it nothing to do with that i'm just trying to put respect on the opponent sure. like that's yeah. you have to yeah. i mean like the packers 
even me, like at the time, I was like, I don't know what Jordan Love is, but the Lions are far better of a football team. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't think the Packers were going to beat the Lions, but you have to look at this thing, try to be objective here. But I get what Shot's saying. You guys can be confident in your football team. I'm not telling you you can't. Lions are a damn good football team, and it's it's not the same Lions team of the past. So I'm glad people are changing their mindset because for a long time it was they're going to lose because they're the Lions. That, right. that narrative is, does not exist anymore.